Hello, welcome to another Pygame tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to add sliders into your Pygame application. So here is a little bit of introduction code that I have linked on my GitHub. It's just a simple menu class that connects to our application and uses the screen variable to draw things on. Um, and all I'm doing is I'm getting the mouse position and the mouse input and then filling the screen with black. So with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing we want to do is create our actual slider class. So for this, I'm going to create a new class called slider, and then I need the constructor. And this constructor is going to take a few values. So the first one is going to be the position, which is going to be of type tuple. The next one is going to be the size, which is going to be of type tuple. And then we're going to get the initial value, which is going to be of an int. And then we're going to get the minimum value, which is going to be of type int, the maximum value, which is going to be of type int. And actually, this initial value is going to be of type float. My apologies. <laughs> all right. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get um, this all set up. So we need to actually give these values to our class here. So we're going to do self dot position equals position, and we're going to do self dot size equals size. Now we need a couple um, convenience of values here, and the reason um, we're going to get the left of the slider, the right of the slider, and the top of the slider. And you might be saying, well, we already have the position, so why do we need that? Now, the reason is because we're, the position is going to be the actual center of the slider. And we're doing this because, in my personal opinion, UI should be um, assigned its position based on its center. And this is for a ton of different reasons. The main one being that text um, has a varying width um, and varying height. So it is easier to assign the center of the text than the for example, the top left, because you don't know how big it's going to be. So in my personal opinion, assigning the center makes it a little bit easier to organize things, especially when a lot of your UI stuff is actually preferred to be centered properly. Uh, so here we're going to be getting the um, the left, right, and top of it. And so basically our slider here, if I open up paint, our slider is going to be here, and we're going to be defining the center. And then we are going to um, basically getting the left here, and the right here and then the top here. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get that. So we have the self.slider left position, which is going to be equal to our self.position at zero. And we're going to subtract half of the width, so size at zero, floor divided by two. And then the right position is going to be the exact same. Make sure you change it to right position, but instead we add half the width. Top position is going to be self.slider top position going to be equal to the self dot position at one and then we're going to subtract half of the height so size at one divided by four divided by two so now we have some nice little attributes that'll make our life easier now we need to store our min and our max value so self dot min equals min self dot max equals max and then we need to store the initial value and the initial value here um, the reason we store it as a float is because we're, this initial value is actually going to be a percentage of our data here. The reason that we're using a percentage instead of using an actual value is because it makes it easier to position our button relative to the size of the slider. So for example, if we make it 50%, it's a lot easier to calculate than if we were to set a specific value. Um, and this is just a personal thing that I find a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and set our initial value using and uh, knowing this is a percentage. So we do self.initial value is equal to, in parentheses, self. Uh, slider right position minus self dot slider left position and then we got or we multiply this by our initial position or initial value here my apologies and I'm going to make a little comment just to show that this is a percentage all right so now we are going to define the two recs that we're going to be using for our slider the first rec is going to be the container which is going to be the bounds of our slider and then the next one is going to be the actual button that we're going to be using for defining where we are on our slider and what value it has so the self.container rect is going to be equal to pygame.rect and for the x position we're going to take the slider left position and then for the top position we're going to do the slider top position or for the y, we're going to do slider top position. And then for the width, we'll do self.size at zero. And then for the height, we'll do self.size at one. And let's create the button rect. So self.buttonrect equals pygame.rect. And then for the x position, we want the self.slider uh, left position. And then we want to add this initial value, self.initial value. And then because our button is not going to be zero pixels wide, we need to offset it by half of the width. 
So we're going to subtract it by five because I want mine to be 10. And so this means that the X value will be equal to the actual value because we want it to be a little bit off so that the middle of it, which is what we're going to be using for calculating our value, is going to be equal to the actual value that we want. Um, and so here, now let's add our Y position, which is simply going to be self dot uh, slider top position. So sli self dot slider top position here. And then we need our width, which is 10. And then we need our self dot size at one. There we have our button rect here. And now let's go ahead and add a little render, which is going to be used for our debugging here. So we need the self and our app. And just for debugging purposes, let's just get these up and running before we add any functionality. So pygame.draw.rect and then app.screen or whatever your display variable is called. The color uh, for the container, I'm gonna do dark gray. And then for the rect, I'm gonna do self.container rect. Then I'm gonna duplicate this and make sure that I'm doing a different color for this, so blue. And then self.button rect. And now inside of our menu, we'll simply do a little debugging statement. Let's first create a slider object. So I'm gonna create a list of sliders, so self.sliders equals, and then in this list, I'm going to do a slider. And the slider is going to be posi positioned in the center. I already have a little variable called ui.center that stores our center value, but you can just manually put it in. So ui.center. And then for the size, I'm going to do 100 by 30. And then for the initial value, I'm going to do 0 0.5, which is 50%. The um, minimum value, I'm going to do 0. And for the maximum value, I'm going to do 100. And then here in the run, I'm just going to do for slider in self.sliders, slider.render and then send it the self.app. So it has the screen to draw. And now if we run this, we see nothing. We are filling the screen with black afterwards, whoopsies. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now we're filling the screen before. There we go, we have our little slider here positioned exactly in the middle. So that's all good and up and running, but we need to be able to actually interact with the slider. So let's add some interaction functionality. So for this, we will do a new method called move slider. So I'll do def move slider self. And then here, all we're going to do is we're going to actually receive the mouse position as an argument. So mouse position. And then all we're going to do is we're going to do self dot button rec dot center X equals mouse position at zero. And then inside of our loop here, all we have to do is have one check. So if slider dot container rect dot collide point, and then all we have to do is get the mouse position, which we already have here. So the mouse position, then slider dot move slider and then we need to send it this mouse position as well now if we run this i misspelled center x now it should all work and as you can see it's following it pretty well but we only want it to happen whenever we're clicking so all i'm going to do is make sure that add an extra conditional so we're going to do and mouse at zero uh, this is just using our mouse pygame.mouse to get press zero in the brackets means left click two means right click if you want to do middle mouse it's one so there you go and if we run this now you can see nothing happens until we click and then it follows our mouse um, and you can see that it snaps to our mouse which is what i personally like for my sliders however if you want it to only work when you're clicking on this simply change this conditional from if container rect collide point to if button rect collide point and that's how you change that so now we need to actually make this useful and get the value of our slider. And so for this, we're going to add a new method. I'm going to do def get value, set itself. And here we're going to be using a pixels to calculate our value. Um, and so I'm going to explain a little bit about how this is going to work. So here we're going to have our slider and we're basically going to take the pixel position and then uh, of the left, the left pixel position. And um, we're going to subtract that from the right pixel position to get our range here. And then we're going to take the button position we're going to take that and then we're going to take this and we're going to calculate the percentage that this is out of this whole piece. And the reason that we're using pixels here instead of the max and the min values is because um, we want this to be infinitely scalable so that we can make a slider this big, we can make a slider, we can make a slider this big, assign them the exact same ranges and they will have the exact same max and mins and it will all work infinitely scalable. So now that we know that, let's go ahead and implement it. So what we're going to do that is we need the value range. So I'm going to do the value range is equal to the self.slider right position minus the self.slider left position. And then we need the button value, which is equal to the self.buttonrect.centerx minus the self.slider left position. And then all we need to do for our, um, for our percentage that we're getting, um, we are returning the button value divided by the value range multiplied by the self.max 
minus the self.min and then we need to add the self.min. So basically what we are doing is we are getting the percentage with the button value divided by the value range and then we are multiplying it by our max mi minus our min and then we are adding our min. So we're treating the min like an offset pretty much. Um, and so that's how we get the value given the percentage based on the pixel position of our slider relative to the position of our slider itself. So that being said, there's only one more thing to do. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to use this and show you the shoe firsthand. So here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little debugging statement. I'm going to do print slider dot get value. And then if we go to main here, we run it. Inside of our terminal, we'll see we have 50. And as we move it down, we get all the way and we go to zero here, I believe. It should go to zero or maybe not. And then we go all the way here and we go to 99. And what you'll notice is that we can't quite get to this 100 over here. We can get to the zero, although it is a little bit hard, um, but we can't get to the 99. And this is because of pixel collision. Uh, it's a little bit off and it's a little bit hard because the pixel um, collision is so exact. So we wanna make a little bit of a padding and we're literally just gonna make this padding equal to um, 0.5 pixels on each side. So the way we do that is very, very simple. All you have to do is subtract one to the value range and you're done and that's it. That's all you gotta do. And so now if we run this main again and we see this, we can go all the way to zero and then all the way to 100, perfectly fine. As you can see, it's also a lot easier to get to these end values here. There we go, and there you go. Let's just go ahead and make sure that this works with different sized sliders. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. And then I'm also gonna make this print statement only happen whenever I'm currently um, using that as my active slider. And then I'm just gonna um, make these in different spots. So I'm gonna make this one 50 down. So UI slider center zero, UI slider center one plus 50. And then I'm actually just gonna duplicate that instead and make it easier on me then offset this one by 100. Then I'm going to make this one 300 wide. And let's say, let's make this one on, um, 40 tall. And I'll make this one 1000 wide. And I'll make this one only 20 tall. And we'll keep all the ranges exactly the same to really show that this works. So now we have these sliders at different um, heights, just to show off that that works. As you can see, this one works as intended where we go all the way to 100 and then all the way to zero at the end. And this one also goes all the way to zero at the end and all the way to 100 there. And this one, the same way, even though it's huge, it has the exact same range, which is pretty cool. But another cool thing about this is that the values for one don't have to start at zero. So I'm gonna make this middle one set to 50 to 100. So this only has a range of 50 uh, values. And then I'm going to make this one equal where the beginning is 300 and the end is 100. So it's a decreasing slider, which is a little bit unorthodox, but we can absolutely work with it. So using this main here, uh, we have just our regular one as before, but now this one only goes from 100 at the right to 50 at the left. And this one here, as you can see, when we click on it, we're at 200 here. We go all the way over, we're at 100 and we go all the way over here and we're at 300. Uh, as you can see, that works pretty well. Um, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, there's a couple more like extra functionalities you can do, like changing the width of your slider here. Um, but that doesn't really, that's not really that hard. You can just, you can just hard code it or you can make it uh, malleable through via like the object creation itself. Um, but it doesn't really change anything. It's all the same stuff. It's just a different slider um, size here. But um, with that being said, that's basically the entire tutorial. So thank you very much. Have a good day. See you guys.